Welcome to the Learning Center for Q7 software. In our second screencast, we are going to introduce you to one of the most powerful features of Q7, Q7 context. A context is a relevant part of the application state which is expected to be recreated by the test case. Let's get back to our first test from the screencast on Q7 basics. Last time we have created a new Java project and a simple test case. As you can see, the execution view shows that our test had passed successfully. We can pick up where we left and replay the test case once again without changing a thing. However, this time our test fails. We can see the error message in the new project wizard stating that the project with the same name already exists. If we switch back to Q7 window, it says that the test has failed since the finish control is disabled. The reason is that we hadn't deleted our previously created project from the Eclipse workspace like we did last time, while test assumes that the project doesn't exist. In order to avoid it, we will use a workspace context which allows you to set up the workspace of your application under test. We open the new context wizard where one can select the location of the context, one of the predefined context types, in our case it's going to be workspace context, and enter the new context name. Our workspace context appears in Q7 Explorer and opens in the test area. The most precise way now is to specify the project to be excluded from the Eclipse workspace. However, in our case it would be enough to clear the workspace before running the test. The context is ready to be added to our test case. It can be done in several ways. The easiest is to open the test editor, unfold the context panel and drag and drop the context from Q7 Explorer. We hit replay and see how our Java project disappears from the workspace before Q7 runs the test. This time it goes smoothly without any user interaction. The execution view now shows the results of both context and test case execution. Now here is another example. Imagine that some of our previous tests had switched our application under test to the debug perspective instead of Java. If we go back to Q7 now and run the test case, it fails again. The reason is that there is simply no required menu item where it's supposed to be. As we can see, in order for our test to pass successfully, the Java perspective should be opened in our application under test. It can be easily done with Q7. That's why we create another context using the same new context wizard. Only this time we select the workbench context to be added to our project. Again, the context appears in Q7 Explorer and opens in the editor area. In order to specify the perspective, we can browse for the perspective ID. Once we have changed the context, we can save it and drag and drop it to our test case. Please note that the contexts are being applied in the same particular order as they are listed in our test case. For now, it doesn't really matter how we arrange them, but it can be crucial in case of multiple contexts. We can now replay the test case and see that it passes successfully. It has a set of contexts which will clear the application under test workspace and reset the workbench to the default Java perspective. Remember that this context can now be reused for any test cases in any Q7 projects. In our screencast, we have shown the basic usage of the most common context types. There are several out-of-the-box Q7 contexts provided in the new context wizard. However, your developers can create any types of custom contexts themselves. A good example would be a database context or any other kind that you can only imagine. Our team is always ready to help you come up with the new ideas on how to use contexts for your testing project. Thank you for watching Q7 Screencast. Please take time to visit our website and try out Q7 by Zorin. Thank <music> you.